a service-based company uh, that is trying to market to towns outside of their core service area um, and generating location pages based on that unique content um, of those locations. Um, that's what I'm working on right now for a company. So um, what you were talking about with Lavanya uh, making, how do you word that? Inseparable, making uh, the service inseparable from the area um, is interesting to me. So, you know, just trying to figure out ways to do that. I'm working with the client on doing like customer spotlights. Um, they happen to be doing a job yesterday that was for uh, a theater that's over 100 years old. They have a testimonial from the client. Um, so what I'm thinking is really making the customer spotlights a part of the blog and then featuring them on the location pages as like snippets. Um, but I'm wondering as a snippet, does that work well for the SEO on that specific page? Does that make sense what I'm trying to ask there? It, well, the devil's in the details of how you implement it. But yeah. I do like this strategy. I think case studies make great local pages. Mm -hmm. There's a client I have that does very, very niche industrial services, like stuff that you and I don't even know needs to happen. Yeah. And what they wanted, the problem was, is that they are so known for their hometown that people don't realize they can literally serve anyone in the United States. So they wanted to have a strategy where they could feature, hey, we can do it in your backyard. So what we did is we took these internal reports that they were producing for the clients, we took the client's names off of them, took a couple of pictures out of that report, and we talked about what the company did in Kentucky. Mm -hmm. as a way and it was it was it was presented as a prod a product brief or a project brief for Kentucky and and so you could see that number one for people who would see it and encounter it would say oh they can serve in Kentucky too but because we talk about what it was they did in Kentucky at this type of plant without mentioning the plant's name and personal identification number, you know, you can't tell which company they serve. We now have, if someone in Kentucky searches for, I need someone who can help service my such and such plant in yeah. Kentucky. Now we can be found that way too. And so that's kind of the strategy on a different kind of scale. So, but, you know, so if you are, I, I'm familiar with Charlotte, so I'll, we could talk Charlotte. So. If I wanted to, if I was a Charlotte-based plumber and I wanted more customers in the surrounding area, areas, finding a plumbing project that I could do in Gastonia that I could feature on my blog could help me reach people in Gastonia because they could see pictures of what I did talk about the specific things I did. I could do one for Fort Mill, one for Matthews, one for Huntersville, one for the university area, you know, and just, just start, start. And what's cool is you probably have more than one project and each project's a little bit different. So if you talk about what you did and where, what you did where, you're gonna have all kinds of really good blog posts. You can then use your power of internal internal linking and link all those to your service page for Gastonia or Fort Mill, you know? And so now you get the power of internal links pushing to that. Yeah. With internal links, you can reciprocate. So you can link out to your case study about what you did as a plumber in Gastonia. Mm -hmm. And that's totally legit. And so it's this this kind of synergy kind of thing going, but it's the kind of also the hub and spoke system where you have a landing page dedicated to being a plumber in Gastonia. You have a bunch of content about 
plumbing projects in Gastonia or here's something weird about the plumbing system in Gastonia. It's a hundred years old. So blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Right. Uh, you know, I don't know. And so now that can link into that, you know, and you can use these internal links to pr prop up your service page. The customers right. who happen to find your blog post can easily get to your service page because you link to it. Google right. takes that link as a signal that that Gastonia page must be important because it keeps getting linked to from within your content. And, right. and, and you're really setting yourself up for a really great success. I, I have another client where they provide services all over the state. And while it's sometimes easy to talk about certain cities in the state, they really have a hard time coming up with things to say about others. Mm -hmm. Boy, you can see the difference when they talk about this city or that city and they link to it from their blog, those page city pages do pretty well. The pages with no internal links because they can't think about how they would talk about that city or they got nothing to say except we really want to serve in that city. Yeah. They don't do well because they don't have internal links to those pages. Yeah. So Google says, well, it, it can't be that important of a page. They don't even link to it themselves. Yeah. Because we got to remember the menu system is for humans and Google uses the menu to identify what pages, but it doesn't use it to rank pages. It's internal links from within content that helps Google say, oh, that page that they keep linking to about Gastonia plumbing, that must be a pretty important page to them. Right. So finding these local topics and then linking to your core page selling that service is, is a really great little, little strategy. And that, that can really, really help. So on the, those are good examples too. I appreciate that. Um, on the location page, what's the proper way to link to the, the case study per se? You know how when we do external linking, we want to be careful not to link back to someone who links to us that's reciprocal linking, right? Mm -hmm. But with the internal links, it doesn't matter. Okay. It's totally legit. So it, the answer to your question is it, it kind of doesn't matter. However, it makes sense to you, right? Um, you can use system, but, but I guess the really important thing is you, I think you want Google to be able to crawl the link. So how you implement it matters and you'd want it to be implemented in such a static way that Google can see the link and crawl, crawl back. So there are some systems that use JavaScript to insert like a list of recent blog posts into a post. Well, Google can't crawl that JavaScript to follow that link. Mm. So that would kind of not allow that page to link back to. Humans could still get there. Yeah. Google couldn't. Okay. So that would be one way of doing it. You could also, you could maybe get a little more advanced. And so with the WordPress system, we have two ways, we have actually several ways, but the two most common ways of organizing our blog posts are, ca are categories and tags. Mm -hmm. So, Stop me if I've waxed eloquent on this before. I am of the opinion that those should be two very different things in that every blog post should fit in one and only one category, but every blog post could be tagged several different ways and the tags and the categories should be very different. So let's say we are a home services company. And the services we provide are plumbing, uh, landscaping, and HVAC. I don't even know if that company makes sense, but we're using this example. The trifecta. The trifecta. So maybe we categorize our blog posts because the blog post is Oh, maybe a blog post is only going to be about one of those things. 
it's only going to be about plumbing or it's only going to be about HVAC or it's only going to be about landscaping. So then we could use the categorization to, of that. Okay. We could also use the tagging system to tag towns that are mentioned in those posts. Gastonia, Fort Mill, Huntersville, Charlotte, University, Matthews. Right. Maybe we could talk about several cities, and so we want to have a tag for several cities. One of the cool things that I think is underappreciated within WordPress is using category pages as landing pages. And so if you do that, you can actually put content on a category page and then below that lists all the things by that category. Mm -hmm. Let me actually show you an example yeah. of, a, of- Like a, an enhanced archive page? So, yeah. So let's, uh, let's look at a, a crazy example of this. I mean, this is the shittiest website ever, but here is the blog category for analytics. And I have some information about analytics, how to measure SEO, how to use Google Analytics for SEO, does Google Analytics help SEO, and below it are every process within the game plan that's related to Google Analytics. Link building. What is link building? Do I need link building? Does link building still work? How to do good link building? Yeah, okay. In interesting, helpful information about link building. And now here's a list of all the link building processes. So let's say this is the plumbing category for Trifecta Home Services and their location page for Gastonia, North Carolina. How would you integrate this? Like, how would you, in your strategy of interlinking, go from the location page to this archive page? So if you decided you wanted a tag page, for instance, to be Gastonia, you'd have all your content and you can, as the developer, just build this out however you want, right? Mm -hmm. And then this literally add the list of archive underneath it. And, it, and how, you could format this however you want based on the, the theme. So you're, you're then using the tag archive page right. as your location page. Yeah, or you could use the category if you felt like a page, a, like it might make sense to use category pages for geography because you're not gonna talk about Gastonia and Matthews, typically. You might talk about how a synergy between HVAC and plumbing, you know, maybe, mm -hmm. but you kind of have to make those decisions. Yeah, right. right. And, and so you could, you, that might be an interesting way to approach this problem. So then you're using these archival pages as pages content. This is not the prettiest page. It says this could be a lot better. There's, there's some actual, some technical SEO problems on this, but it, it gets the purpose. If you wanna learn all that real, a curious ants has to do with link building, this is it, and here's some information just about link building in general. Mm -hmm. So that would be one, what, what I like about this is that because the way WordPress displays these articles, it is very Google friendly and that Google can get to these posts. We're not using some sort of widget that Google might have a hard time reading to get to these posts. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Um, I, we, I've done this on another website where we use the category pages as a landing page. And it was a really interesting approach. There's a couple of tweaks you gotta make to some of the code of how WordPress does things to make this ideal. But 
but it, it could be another way of, of approaching the problem. Yeah, but, interesting. But but if you just if you just built a if you already have a landing page for Gastonia North Carolina home services, and you just wanted to link, you could either find a widget and do it automatically, or as you write the content, just find natural ways to add links to the stuff of the case studies. Yeah. You know, uh, like a, a simple picture and a link would be really effective, right? Yeah. Here's, here's something we did. Go look at it if you want to. Yeah. And with a short sentence that introduces that list of photo, link, photo, link, photo, link, right? Yeah. Cool, thanks for that.